Let's have a look at how to use the acid base chart. So this is pages 8 and 9 of the data booklet from Alberta Education for Chemistry. And what this is is a long list of different acids and bases. So let's sort of look at how it works. You'll notice that on each line there is an acid and there is what's called the conjugate base. And what that is, it's the piece that's left over when you take the hydrogen ion off of the acid. So let's just write some quick equations for that. If I would zoom into something like hydrobromic acid here, we can write a balanced chemical equation showing that HBr would react with water and it is going to form the hydronium ion. This is why it's an acid. And there will be a leftover Br minus, that is the the thing that's left when you pull the H off of the original acid. So this thing here is what we see is called the conjugate base. Now we could also write an equation for the Br minus if it would react with water. Then we can imagine one of the hydrogens from the water would be stolen back and so we would get HBr and the hydroxide anion and this is why it's acting as a base. And so you'll always see that the one reaction forms the conjugate. In this case the conjugate acid or the conjugate base, right? If you start with the base you form the acid, if you start with the acid you form the base. So that's why these things are called conjugate, that's why they're so closely related. Um, you can imagine that both of these reactions don't like to happen. Either one likes to happen and the other one doesn't, or they're kind of halfway in between that they'll form a happy medium. But if the first reaction happens very easily, then this reaction is basically the opposite, so it would go back to the first uh, format, and then it would keep switching back and forth. Well, that doesn't happen, right? So if this is a strong acid, that means this reaction happens very, very well. That means this must be a weak base, so this reaction doesn't happen very well. So let's take that idea back into the big picture here. We want to be able to identify strong and weak acids and bases. And so you might have already recognized a few strong acids in the chart, and those were some of the ones near the top. And it turns out that anything above the hydronium ion, including the hydronium ion, these are strong acids. And so that leaves all of the rest of the things listed here, including the water, to be weak acids. And for bases, it's kind of the opposite. So we mentioned already that if something is a very strong acid, it must be a weak base. Um, but there's a bit of overlap. Actually, the only strong base is the hydroxide right here. So the hydroxide ion is the strong base. And how we recognize that in, uh, in a compound, anything that is an ionic bond with the hydroxide ion. So for example, sodium hydroxide, strong base. Potassium hydroxide, strong base. Calcium hydroxide, strong base. So all of these things fit into this hydroxide category right here because they're ionic compounds, they dissolve in water, they're just going to dissociate into their metal ion and the hydroxide ion. But all of the rest of the bases are weak bases. And now amongst the weak, we could actually draw arrows here. So the weak acids decrease in strength as we go down. And the weak bases decrease in strength as we go up. So let me just explain what I mean by that. For example, oxalic acid right here is a weak acid, but it's stronger than something lower down on the table. So butanoic acid is even weaker than oxalic acid. And the further we go down the table, the weaker they get. And the same thing applies for bases in the other order. So we can take any one of these ions here. One closer to the bottom, like ammonia, is a stronger base than anything we'll find further up on the table because they get weaker as we go up. So strong acids are found on the top of the table, strong base found at the bottom of the table, and they, they decrease from there. You might be wondering what the Ka column means. 
and this number is related to how well an acid ionizes but it's not exactly the same thing and it's not something we study in chemistry 20 it's something for chemistry 30